Hi, welcome to Soul Food Ministries and Outreach. I'm Henriette Hobson. Welcome to No More Jim Crow Ministry as well. I am here today to give honor to, of course, my God, Jesus Christ, his father, my father, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. We also want to, I also want to give honor to the soldiers and the veterans, those that are active or inactive, those that have gone on, you know, generations past, and just give give an honor to that because it is just, it, it is extremely important that we hold our soldiers up in prayer and keep them and support them in any way and every way we possibly can. They should not have to need for housing or food or have um, an income at any time the rest of their lives if they went to war, especially, and fought. I mean, you know, literally was out there fighting and in battle, you know, or what have you. Uh, There still should be benefits to those that were, you know, desk. Everybody, Everybody plays a part and is important because that all you know, saves lives. They should have the best uh, medical treatment and, plan, and, you know, medical plans that anyone in this country has to make sure that they are sound mind, body, and even spirit. The best and the most powerful of chaplains. And now I'm not just talking about educated because you went to school, you know, whatever. I'm talking about someone that has power, that can pray with them and pray them through and help them through. It makes no sense that they are committing suicide at the rates that they are uh, because people's minds are so unhinged because of the trauma that they suffered defending our country and keeping it stable. Then they should have the best of treatment to help keep them off of drugs and off of alcohol and things trying to self-medicate. Um, whatever whatever the highest and best treatment that there is, they're coming up with, uh, even if it's experimental, not something that's going to be harmful, but something that is just ready to go on the market. They should, they should be able, they should not have to wait for it. They should get whatever it is that can help them. If they've used it and it has helped people and it has, has not harmed anyone and they have benefited, I just have something particularly in mind that they gave an injection, excuse me, injection for, and it really helped them with the PTSD, then they, they should have it if they want it. I am just, you know, proud to be an American. I am proud that my father was a World War II veteran hero. He earned uh, five bronze battle stars. He was a heck of a fighter, marksman, left with honorable discharge. And of course, being a black man, he wasn't treated equally, but he fought for this country anyway, which many, many black people, our ancestors did for this country from the time that it was in the, in the beginning stages. It was, you know, We've, we've been here all along. We were here before, even before the, before the, uh, the settlers got here. But regardless of that, <laughs> um, thank you. There should be a thank you. Not just in word, but in deed. Doing something to make them feel worthy. And that someone's grateful. When you've, I was just recently somewhere, I, I was out of town and I was, we were at dinner and we were sitting down, you know, eating our dinner. And we had been on the road and we were tired and we were so ready to just go and get in the bed, you know, because we had been driving for hours. And so we were sitting over in an area by ourselves and, um, I believe that the host or whatever purposely, you know, brought this family over to sit next to us. Trying to, you know, disturb us is what they were trying to do. You know, just, you know, think it was, thought it was something funny to, to, to do that. But it was a blessing from the Lord. And it was a family of three little boys, 
You know, they were like, um, one was not even one yet. The other may have been two, and then the other one might have been four or something like that. The cutest little boys. I thought a couple of them was little girls. They were so cute. And them and their mom. And their dad was in a wheelchair. And I noticed that he had a missing leg and had a missing hand or arm. Well, of course. Well, and I mean, as soon as they got in there, the kids were crying. And it was a lot of stuff going on. But they, they were trying so hard to quiet them down and not to be disturbing and all of that, you know. And we were just sitting there. And just, you know, just letting the Lord just do whatever. Because at first it was like, well, we can just get up and move and go sit somewhere else. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that because I don't want to make them feel bad. And we had, you know, we've had kids and been out, you know. And, you know, even as well-mannered as my children were, there are just times when kids just, they just don't feel like it. They don't, they don't want to be there. They're tired, especially at dinner time. Some of them are sleepy and they go to bed, you know, early and they're ready to be, you know. So, um... They, they, you know, they, they were sitting there and we, you know, finally got our food or whatever. And it wasn't what it was supposed to be, but we got it. And the Lord impressed upon me to pay for their dinner. And so I was trying to figure out, okay, what would be the best way to do this, Lord? Because I don't want to just give the money to the, the waitress who says that she's going to give it to them. Uh, I mean, she was a nice lady and all that to us, but that didn't mean, you know. And so I thought, okay, so I don't want to just reach over and hand them some cash. You know, I was trying to put um, things on my card to add my get my points up because I have, you know, a, a plan for some my, using my points at some time in the future. And so I was trying to use my card to build my points up. And so I thought, okay, so what do I do? And so it just came to me and I believe it was the Lord, and said, you know, get a gift card, and then hand them the gift card. So that's what I did. And I didn't want to ask, are you a veteran? Is this what, you know, I, I didn't want to be pointing out the, the man's, you know. So I didn't. I didn't say anything about it. I would have liked, loved to have said, I appreciate what you've done and all that, but I just turned around and said, excuse me, to, to his wife and to him. And I mainly looked at her and I said, uh, we would like to, you know, share this with you. And, you know, it's a gift card for about $40. I hope it's enough to cover everything. I said, um, we've had children and, you know, it gets expensive to eat out and just wanted to, you know, Lord just put it on my heart to just want to bless you with this. And they were, of course, shocked, you know, and then, then, um, you know, she turned around and said a couple more things to me and he kind of joined in, but he was a little, you know, he just seemed that he wasn't with it much, you know, he was just kind of a little distracted, a little sad and looking, you know, wasn't very animated and then you know he had one little boy sitting on his lap and he was kind of covering up his own and then toward the end he kind of let it out and I, I don't know that he wanted me to say something or not but I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna mess that up <laughs> I just wasn't gonna you know and so I never said anything you know except God bless you and keep you I hope everything you know that you're blessed and so forth and so on and I didn't even witness to him or anything like that it was just too many things going on had a little teething baby sitting there and all that so I just you know, I did what the Lord told me to do. And uh, I'm grateful that I, you know, could hear the Lord. It is important to be able to hear and understand, and know you've heard from him. And do what it is that he tells you to do, you know. And uh, so, you know, the enemy could have tried to, you know, make us think, oh, God, please. You know, got up and left, put our food in a to-go box or whatever, moved to another table. I was not going to do that and hurt those people's feelings. I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel led to do that. I wasn't just thinking about my, I want, you know, about myself, you know, uh, sometimes, it, not just sometimes, but I mean, you have to think about yourself too, but there are times, you know, when it's not about you. That's a small inconvenience, you know. So any opportunity that you can get 
bless a veteran. You know, what kind words, a smile, a thank you. Uh, I'm praying for you, you know, that, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And pray for them. The ones that are in action, the ones that are not. Because that battle is still going on in some of their minds. No matter whether they are there or not. The disturbance is already and damage already done. Uh, I can remember my father, he did not want to talk about the war. Every now and then, and maybe I got maybe two stories out of him, you know, about little things. And he would say, I, you know, baby, I don't want to talk about, I don't like talking about that. This, you know, I had to kill too many people. And he didn't even like weapons. He didn't want weapons in the house. We lived in the hood and he didn't even want a weapon in the house. I mean, it was, it was um, very traumatic. You know, he may have walked away a unrewarded, really, hero, but there were so many lives that he took that he didn't want to take. But he had to, for his own sake and for the sake of the country. And there's, you know, there's a lot of people, they could not function. I mean, he had a good job, you know, so forth and so on. There are, you know, I was talking to a gentleman when I was there, what in, um, I was at a memorial, and uh, he was a history buff on wars, you know, the history of wars and everything. And he was, he was, you know, just, you know, talking about how, you know, excellent of soldiers that the black soldiers were. And he, especially, you know, in the World War One and Two, you know, and that, you know, I mean, he he gave he gave black soldiers all the praise. I was like, well, you know. <laughs> But really, the uh, so many white people are alive and families or even in existence today is because of the of the uh, expertise of black soldiers and their endurance and re re you know resilience against you know and saving their lives so they could come home and make children <laughs> you know because they were dying you know quick so. And then uh, one time I was at a Bible conference and this lady, she was from Germany or somewhere, she's from another country. And she began to tell me stories about, about, uh, and she said, I, I didn't, I didn't know her, hadn't, didn't even see her in the, anywhere in the room. It was a big, huge room where, where, and she came over to my table, you know, pretty much everybody had kind of dispersed a little bit. We were just kind of sitting around talking back and forth with it. Hadn't, had already eaten and the you know, speaker had finished and she came over, she said, Hi, she said, I just want, I had to come over here to tell you this. And I'm like, okay, you know. And so she said, during the war, and I can't remember which one or whatever, she, but she said, I just want you to know those black soldiers were so kind, so mannerable and gentlemen. She said, they did not treat us at all like the white soldiers did. This woman was white, okay? And she said they didn't rape anybody. And, you know, he, she said they protected us. They did everything they could to try to make things comfortable for us women and what have you. She said, and I just wanted to tell you how I appreciate it. And I'm just so proud of how they handled themselves and handled us. And I mean, it was, it was just awesome. I, I didn't expect that. She didn't know me at all. She said, I just want you to know I had to tell you. So, you know, I am proud of that. I am grateful to God for that. And I'm sure not every soldier everywhere was this, that way. But pretty much because we came out of some horror and we knew what it was and what it felt like for our women to be raped. Sometimes right before our very eyes and we couldn't do anything about it as a man. Uh, they, they couldn't do it. They might be a man, I'm not. Don't want to be, I'm good like I am. And understanding that these women don't deserve to be treated that way. Maybe watching their fellow soldiers do some things and they would not participate in it or may try to, you know, do what they could to, you know. But... I am very, very, of every soldier, every color, 
that has helped keep our freedom. And I pray in Jesus name for the, just the calm and the peace, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you and honor you, Father, first of all. But I pray for every veteran everywhere of the United States that no matter if they're in another country or what's going on, but that they come to you more important than anything else. But that their minds be kept sound. And that they don't kill for the sake of killing. And that they come home safely with all limbs, all, you know, without being wounded or harmed. I know that's possible because the Bible has stories in it about the wars and your, your people never got harmed. Not one. So I thank you and I praise you for them. And I ask you to help our country. Bring it together in peace and unity for everyone. Equal treatment for everyone. And put people in office that will run this country with the, with the God reverence and righteous mind and heart of you. Father, we just thank you and we pray that you stop the war over in the Middle East. Get us out of that battle. I thank you for blessing your people everywhere and that we make a point to help any veteran that we have an opportunity to help. You've given us the prompt on what to do. So we give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. So we, you know, want to continue to pray for our country. We want it to be better than what it is today. There has been a lot of ungodly people that has disturbed things here. And people that should not have never been in office need to be voted out. And we need to become a God. Jesus. Not just what a whole lot of people call God, but we're talking about God, the Father, Jesus' Father. Holy Spirit led country with peace. And doing everything possible to stay out of war. And to treat everybody well. And that our country makes sure that our water is clean. We're in America and we're still concerned about places, states and cities and counties that don't have clean water. Lead everywhere. Radioactive. That's ridiculous. Bad politicians. And that nobody's hungry. There's plenty of food. We have plenty of land and fields. And farmers are growing food. And there's surplus. And give farmers the heart to just grow a section just for food banks. And those women that know how to can and prepare, dry, make jerky or whatever it is. Um, and to make sure nobody, no one in America is hungry. Every part of America. Every, every part that even the islands of Puerto Rico and Hawaii, uh, uh, Alaska, and the, the Caribbean islands, all of those that are connected to America. Help us, Lord. 
Give each and every one of us what it, the instructions on what we can do. No matter how small. And not to feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed, Lord. Uh, thinking, what can I do? This is such a huge mess. But it just takes each person doing a little something. Whatever it is that you have instructed us to do. You've already left instructions telling us to take care of the poor, orphans, and widows. And so we need to, you know, be able to get that done. Help us to get that done. Sometimes we can't get up and get move forward to get that done. So help us to do what you called us to do. And to be pray. I mean, some real intercessors. I mean, amp my intercessory uh, passion up. And break through, you know, to help the country. I know that uh, someone was saying that, you know, somebody was saying they wasn't going to, they were going to fast until the war was over. They were going to keep praying, praying until the war stopped over there in the Middle East. Well, it's not impossible. The person that was saying, saying it was saying, that's not, you know. But there were people that did make inroads into breaking breaking off wars, being powerful intercessors. Now, it's a serious thing, and you really got you know know how to pray through. But it, it's possible. That's that's how victories are won. I understand the point he was trying to make with that, but also I, you know people we need to be careful saying what we can't do because we can our prayers make it makes you told us to pray so they must make a difference and you said you hear us when we pray we believe this pray so thank you bless the veterans bless the veterans and i say sorry for getting out of the frame god bless america <laughs> and god bless every veteran everywhere and that they know Jesus Christ, baptized in the Holy Spirit, healed and whole, and give God the glory. See you next time right here on Soulful Ministries.